since I was a little kid, I've been a writer. So I started very early, like by the time I was 12, I had kind of written a novel, you know? Um, I'm always in, half in my imagination and it's very vivid. And, you know, sometimes I'll think, okay, I'm gonna take a break from that, you know, and, and uh, I don't need to be constantly in this creation. Uh, and I can't, it's addicting. I, I start thinking of a story and then, you know, some will kind of fade off and some I fall in love with. And the act of falling in love with an artistic project is um, essential for me. I went to film school because at the time I wanted to make political documentaries, you know? Um, but I, I never could quite get there. I always made dramas instead. It would accidentally turn into a drama, you know? Um, and then I started writing. I'd been writing a long time actually, but I started writing professionally. Um, I wrote my first script with two other women who were playwrights. And then eventually I wrote my first script uh, by myself, which was Ease By You. And that script people were very interested in. And I woke up one day and I thought I'm gonna do it myself. And fortunately I was working with people who were supportive of me, you know, and I was able to uh, put, it, put that together and I got the opportunity to direct it, you know. So, and, and when I did that, I, um, it came out so close to the way I envisioned it that I thought, okay, that's it. I don't have to do it again, you know? Whatever I had to prove, I've proven it and I can move on with my life. But I couldn't, I actually, uh, it was intoxicating <laughs> and a little addicting. And um, I felt that I have more to offer as a writer director so like with Harriet, you know, I went to a meeting. I never really considered doing a Harriet Tubman movie. But in the process of the meeting, as the producer's talking to me about it and showing me pictures of her as a young woman, I fall in love, you know? And so that's a, it's almost like falling in love for me. It's a very, very uh, strong feeling that I have to have in order to direct because directing is hard. It does take me away from my family and um, it, it just takes a lot of energy. There's not much time. You got to be miles away from here for dawn. Where is she? Follow that north star. If there are no stars, just follow the river. Listen for them. Fear is your enemy. Whoa, easy now. I'm gonna be free or die. I don't know if you know how extraordinary this is, but you have made it 100 miles to freedom all by yourself. Would you like to pick a new name to mark your freedom? Harriet Tubman. You are welcome here anytime. If I'm free, my family should be too. I made up my mind, I'm going back. You're confident, composed, when trouble comes. You'll be ready. Papers. It says here you're five and a half feet tall. You ain't more than five feet. Must have won my high boots that day. Why are you back here? It ain't safe. I come to get you. Bring all of you to freedom. I think I was definitely intrigued by the fact that Harriet's story had never been done on the big screen. Um, the producers that I met with, uh, Deborah Martin Chase and Daniela Taplin Lumberg, the producers of Harriet, had this vision along with the first screenwriter, Gregory Allen Howard, of doing her as a young woman, almost like, a, an, like an action hero, you know, which she actually was. So that action is kind of inherent in the story. What I, when I came on the project, what I really wanted to do was bring the real Harriet Tubman story, like really her real life, her real family. And, um, and I found that uh, you didn't need to make much of it up. You know, it really was, it's the, excitement and the drama and the movement and the danger and the jeopardy is inherent in in the story so um you know it felt like it had all the qualities you want in a good you know drama good action film you know good adventure film do you know what would happen if you got caught you got lucky harriet i made a diss for all my own so don't you tell me what i can't do Harriet, welcome to the Underground Railroad. Oh. Every
everybody, everywhere is looking for you. God don't mean people to own people. Find this thief and burn her at the stake. Hurry! I will give every last drop of blood in my veins until this monster called slavery is dead. Ready? While I was doing the research um, to begin the writing process, you know, I was rewriting the script, I, um, I became so immersed in it that she became very real to me. Like, I, like we were having a conversation like this, you know? And um, that brought a lot of beauty into my life you know, for the past two and a half years that I had, I felt, I came to feel I was having a relationship with her, you know, and, and um, I think one of the big connections was her spirituality, you know. I think that that really was something that seemed familiar to me, you know, and that I could relate to this kind of private conversation that she felt that she was often in, you know, with a higher power. Harriet's spirituality is inherent to her story. In other words, I didn't make that up at all. I realized it because I don't think I knew, I don't think I really understood that. As I was doing the research, I realized that it was such a tremendous part of the story that I would be leaving it out if I didn't deal with it. So I decided to, you know, to lean into it um, because it was so concrete for her. It was so real for her. And she spoke so many times of it so eloquently and she, um, you know, all of her contemporaries knew, anybody that knew her knew that she believed she was talking to God. And they said, well, even if we don't believe it, we know she believes it and we can't explain how she survived.